Hello. The great English author C.S. Lewis had this to say about Psalm 19. I take this to be the greatest poem in the Psalter and one of the greatest lyrics in the world. Today, we have the privilege of digging into the meaning of this psalm, so we can use it in praise and prayer to God. The psalm begins by asking us to observe how creation proclaims the greatness of God without uttering a single word. All of creation sings an unending concert to the glory of God. Without using words, all of creation sends out a message of God's greatness and power. How clearly the sky reveals God's glory. How plainly it shows what he has done. Each day announces it to the following day. Each night repeats it to the next. No speech or words are used. No sound is heard. Yet their message goes out to all the world and is heard to the ends of the earth. God made a home in the sky for the sun. It comes out in the morning like a happy bridegroom, like an athlete eager to run a race. It starts at one end of the sky and goes across to the other. Nothing can hide from its heat. Psalm 19, 1 through 6. Several years ago, I was traveling from Blue Springs to Kansas City, Kansas, and a grasshopper decided to take a trip with me. It rode all the way on the, my windshield on the driver's side of my truck. While the grasshopper and I traveled, I had a chance to speak to God about the wondrous creation before me. It had eyes, tiny lungs, wings, jumping legs, and life. I remember telling God, even though this is a nuisance insect in my life, there's absolutely no way I can create any part of that bug. Apparently, God made this insect for his pleasure and purposes. In spite of my driving at 70 miles an hour, it was able to stay on my windshield all the way to Kansas. Without saying a single word, this bug gave me an opportunity to praise God for 30 minutes. Paul was right when he wrote to the Romans. But the basic reality of God is plain enough. Open your eyes. There it is. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what God has created, people have always been able to see what their eyes as such can't see eternal power, for instance, and the mystery of his divine being. That's the message translation of Romans chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. We praise God for the gift of his law. God's law is divine instruction, guidance, and direction for living. It renews and restores life. It is trustworthy and teaches wisdom and maturity. The law of the Lord is perfect. It gives new strength. The commands of the Lord are trustworthy, giving wisdom to those who lack it. The laws of the Lord are right, and those who obey them are happy. The commands of the Lord are just, and give understanding to the mind. Reverence for the Lord is good. It will continue forever. The judgments of the Lord are just. They are always fair. They are more desirable than the finest gold. They are sweeter than the purest honey. They give knowledge to me, your servant. I am rewarded for obeying them. Psalms 19, 7 through 11. God's instructions lead us to a right relationship to him and others. Let's meditate today on the great value of God's love, or his, his law. That's his instruction, his direction, his guidance for life. So here's some things to think about while you pray through this psalm. God's instruction, direction, and guidance is perfect. It gives people strength for living. It's trustworthy. It gives people wisdom. It's right. It makes people who live by them happy. It's just. It gives people understanding about God's plans and purposes. The law gives knowledge. We're rewarded by obeying God's instructions. So I'd really encourage you to today take some time, get your Bible out, and just read through these sentences and make them your own. So most of us will agree with these affirmations about God's law. That's his instructions, directions, and guidance for life. However, most of us will also agree that we struggle with following his directions. Thus, the ending of the psalm is a perfect way to end our meditation on God's glory in creation and in his law. God, help me to see my blind side. One of Bob's pastor friends once prayed. He was in perfect accord with this psalm. 
None of us can see our own errors. Deliver me, Lord, from hidden faults. Keep me safe also from willful sins. Don't let them roll over me. Then I shall be perfect and free from evil of sin. May my words and my thoughts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my refuge and my redeemer. Psalm 19, 12 through 14. In addition to the prayer of Bob's friends, we can pray the following. Keep me safe. Don't let willful sins rule over me. Free me from evil, the evil of sin. May my words and my thoughts be an offering of praise to you. Praise you that I know you, my refuge and my redeemer. So Tony and I would like to pray for you. And if you will send to me either an email at bspread49 at gmail.com or private message me on Facebook, we'll pray for you. We'll also press, uh, send on your prayer request to our prayer team at Baywood Baptist Church. Thanks for joining us. We uh, pray that God blesses you. May this psalm be really powerful in your life today. We pray that. Again, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.